buckle up and settle in if you're interested to watch a behind the scenes process video, process and principle video as I'm going to uh, walk through what's going on step by step um, in the making of this commissioned painting that's entitled uh, Quantum Landscape Noir, 10 foot by 4 foot uh, canvas, beautifully stretched uh, by my guys locally here in Los Angeles. Anyways, I'm prepping the surface now. Um, you may have seen just a moment ago incense and uh, Tibetan bells used to just bring a, a certain quality and dimension to the space. You could say a, a ritual of sorts, but a uh, kind of tuning as well. So you see the blank canvas. Uh, before I even got to this moment in time, I probably prepared myself for about three months, four months, energetically to be in the primed state of consciousness. As you can imagine, when dealing with a commission, it's sight unseen. Nobody knows what the piece is going to look like. And so it takes a bit of courage to begin. It takes a bit of courage to commit uh, on all parties involved, the commissioner and me. These lines, you may be wondering, where are they coming from? I can tell you this, it's not premeditated. So to walk to and face a blank canvas with a big brush and to begin for a painting that's already been accounted for as it's a commission, there's a certain a level of courage and intimidation you have to overcome to experience freedom during the creative process. Uh, this this phase right here is being shot because uh, it was captured during a live uh, transmission uh, held by my wife, Jude. So uh, this is uh, going to be just vertical like this for a short period. But now you can see white strokes are going over the black base. And once again, those strokes are being created not from a, a, an aesthetic idea that's held in the head. Actually, really what's happening is, a, is an exercise in what I refer to as flow dynamics, which is based on my um, practices that started when I was about 17, 18, with the Shaolin monk master, I would say, Buddhist uh, master, um, who... Um, I studied with for many years. Essentially, just you, you, you. I integrated these these practices into my painting process, my life process, and any creative modality that I work in, which is about uh, the exercise. The fundamental exercise is to practice the attention to be very focused on the present and an observation of your senses and ride a dynamic state while you're in this dynamic state your attention is following an intuitive guide here I'm using a pinstriping brush it's the first time actually I'm using a pinstriping brush in a work of art uh, and why is that the, following those same functions uh the the idea came in a spontaneous intuitive moment and i followed through with it acquired one and it became part of this creative process here i'm using a straight edge why um again it's intuitive i'm you know in the moment i'm feeling a pull towards geometric alignment patterns that you begin to see this this is all happening in real time it's not from memory that's the important thing i'm not creating from memory and that's part of the training you are accessing a different dimension of 
information acquisition in the creative process. That's what I'm doing. I am not resorting to my memories of uh, aesthetic principles of previous successful outcomes and how I achieve them, which becomes a certain style and you become comfortable with. No, I'm abandoning all of that. That's my exercise. I'm essentially jumping off a cliff and allowing myself to free fall and get comfortable with that state of unknowing. And instead of, okay, what am I doing here? Um, that's my wife tapping on my back. I was uh, moving. So there's music in the background playing. And uh, it's very physical. It's very dynamic. And uh, it's a very comprehensive experience. It's a full body, mind, emotion, your environment, your essential energy, your life force energy working in cohesive balance that's that's the essential um aspiration that these four quadrants of your life are brought into a harmonic resonance the whole thing and that's, that that's why these are these this series of works are called quantum landscapes uh as they in fact use contemporary scientific terms to refer to an ancient understanding of dimensional living, which is frequency-oriented. What am I saying? So, it's the understanding implemented. So, you're taking this knowledge that all life cosmically down to your leaf, your molecule, is frequency-based, your consciousness. And you're just training to become aware of these dynamics and subtly tune them to the highest state that you can. Now, what does the highest state translate to into our human reference? That would be a ecstatic dimension so when such a commission comes my way i often explain to the people who are commissioning the works i cannot tell you what the work will look like but i can tell you this the work aspires to attain one thing and one thing only an ecstatic state of liberation joy and if all things being frequency oriented, if I'm able to attain this dynamic fluid state of joy during the creation process, then the principle suggests the completed visual should reflect that quality and therefore reside on the wall where it will live, being a portal of sorts, being a mirror of such qualities and holding these dimensional qualities to them. Now, as I'm talking, you can see all kinds of things have been happening, lines, colors, textures, patterns, application of gold foil. All of, all of what you see is a consequence of this process I'm describing in an unfolding manner. Of course, I've sped it up greatly. I think it's a 20x speed, speed up. You're seeing a few months of work in about 15 minutes. Um, and what I want to express is that you're seeing this surrender unravel. And what's coming together is a consequence of this surrender. This is all that the exercise is. I am eliminating 
to the best that I can, which is a great challenge, things like judgment. You have to understand that's not an easy thing to accomplish when an artist is working. It's so easy to judge yourself and be critical of what you might even consider a mistake. And in this case, what we're doing is overriding that definition of reality and replacing it with allowing every step to be a possibility into a new dimension that is beyond the scope of even your own imagination. That's why I'm not even... Uh, I'm not even depending on my imagination, as unusual as that might sound in the creative process, because I could even say that the imagination is coming from the mind's recomposition of its own memories into a format. I'm not doing that even. At least that's the, the practice. I'm doing my best to go beyond that. A real surrender. There, there is no mental safety net in this place where I'm going. And that means, why should I judge something that's incorrect? Because if, I, if, it wasn't, if there wasn't supposed to be a function of correctness in the first place, why am I judging it? And many questions come up about such approaches, even from the school of art protocols such as color, palettes. Well, if you're just grabbing colors uh, in such a fashion, how are they going to work together if you have no structure, no rules? And I would say... This process doesn't say there is not a structure or rules. It's just a, f a system that is beyond our intellectual comprehension. You're actually accessing by this exercise, this meditative process, perhaps you could call it, what contemporary science refers to as a quantum field, which in fact is being understood as a profound dimension of intelligence. And the ancient masters refer to this in other terms, but essentially the process is the same. But to get to this dimension and integrate this integration, and to integrate this dimension within the human possibility is this focus away from the mental narrative because it's not in the mind. Now, it may come through the mind and then into the emotions, in, into the movement of the body. But the objective is that its origin didn't start in the mind. It started from another dimension outside where we're used to going for our for the choices we want to make. Uh, that's why I refer to it as intuition. In my definition of intuition, the way in I'm understanding it, it's which is where these works are being created from and the practice is being developed through this making process is to learn to hear or follow the intuitive mind which essentially is interpreting this dimension of frequency that's coming from the part of our consciousness which one can refer to as the thing that connects all of us all of life together and which many spiritual traditions of the past always referred to, the one love, the unity consciousness, and so on and so forth. Therefore, the work becomes a landscape of 
this dimension, an interpretive landscape, a popcorn trail, so to speak, that in theory and practice should simply reflect the reality of the journey that I went on to create it. And here is the grand finale finished on the wall of that outcome.